If you've hit level 50 and you're thinking it's the end of the game, well, there is still plenty to do. You can spend your time working on your base, your pals, and your character, improving all three to be as good as they possibly can be. Let's take a look then at some of the endgame content you can do. One of the most time consuming but useful things you can do endgame is to improve your pals through breeding. Improve their stats either by improving their base damage or through inherited traits. First, find pals that have traits you want to have on your own pal, then these traits can be on any pal, even the lower level ones like Lamol. Then when you breed this pal and another pal together, the baby offspring has a chance to inherit the traits of the parents. What you want to do is keep making eggs and hopefully, eventually, the offspring will be born with one or more of the traits on it that you want. You can keep breeding traits of the pals together until you have the pal that you want with four traits on it, like this pal here has on him, where his attack is increased by the maximum amount, 85%. You can also take an even longer approach and wait for the offspring to have the base stats you want as well, since base stats for pals can vary. At level 50, for example, one Jetragon can have an attack of over 270 more than another Jetragon, which is pretty significant. And so if you're breeding a pal for attack, make sure its base attack stat is on the higher end of the scale, or defense, or health, or whatever one you prefer. So breeding pals together for traits, especially to increase their attack stat, is one of the main things you can do end game. Another couple things you can do late game is to increase your pal's attack through pal condensing. And you can do this along with breeding since you'll end up with lots of extra pals and you can use them to increase the stats of your stronger ones. However, you do require 116 of the same type of pal to get one of your pals to four stars. So it's no easy task. Next, the farming chests is another thing you can do late game and you can either do this in the desert, the snowy mountain areas, or you can farm the high level dungeons where there's usually five or six chests inside. Dungeon locations can move around, but if you memorize the locations, you can travel one to the next and do them repeatedly to get a bunch of good stuff. Now, the reason you want to farm chests is for three things. Technical manuals needed to unlock the rest of your build menu, finding schematics, and while they're very, very rare, you can find legendary schematics in chests. And lastly, and more importantly, you're looking for pal souls. These are used to increase your pal's stats at the Anubis statue, and you need small, medium, and large, with medium found in the desert inside of chests, and large are found inside of the chests in the snowy mountain area. And the dungeon chests have a chance of finding all of them. So you can use a mixture of all three of these different chest farming methods to further improve your pal's stats. Next, you can improve your gear, and the ultimate task is to have equipped legendary weapons and armors, and these are not easy to find, however, and while you can discover some of them in chests, as I mentioned earlier, the main way to get them is to farm legendary and alpha bosses. They are the ones that will show up on your map. So Jetragon drops the best item in the game, the legendary rocket launcher, and there's a 3% chance when defeating him it will drop, and that's the same for every other legendary schematic. There's only a 3% chance you will get it from a pal. Now, if you want to farm these more quickly, set your day and night speeds to go as quick as possible, as the bosses will respawn after a full day, and set your pal spawn rate to 3, so you get 3 bosses and 3 chances to get the schematic. Then you can use these in your base to craft the best and strongest gear. And I'm going to be making another video going over all of the different legendary schematics you can find, because there's quite a lot of them. Last but not least, you can focus on building your base and gathering materials for a later time, when more content comes to the game. I've decided to build a different building for each type of thing, so I have a house that's for manufacturing and weapons, I'll have another for PAL related stuff and PAL sphere manufacturing, you of course need farms and breeding farms, ore and wood mine locations, a space for electricity generation, and so on. Then once it's done you can start to gather and store materials for future builds as the game will most certainly have more items added to the build menu. So if you were wondering if there was anything to do once you've reached level 50 or you've defeated all the tower bosses, then there is plenty of content to do end game. Reading the best possible pals, increasing their attacks through pal condensing and pal souls, farming chests and high level dungeons, and improving and making legendary gear, and building your base as good as it can be. Guys, like and subscribe for more guides, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.